Now one question I do get asked quite a lot is about making motherboard trays for mods. So there are a few different ways you can go about doing this. I'm going to show you one of the ways to make one from scratch because it's really quite a useful thing to be able to do because sometimes you're either going to be doing a scratch build where you need everything made from scratch or you may just want to replace a particular part in your case or something else with a different feature. So knowing how to be able to make a motherboard tray yourself is a really useful skill. So I'm going to guide you through it, show you some examples. I've also got a load of CAD files that I've prepared based on the actual ATX specification, which you'll be able to download along with 3D files for those as well. And then hopefully you can put these into your own mods. So let's get into it. So as you know, motherboards conform to certain specifications, most popularly ATX, MATX and Mini ITX. This ensures compatibility between different components, an important point to consider when making your own chassis. Thankfully, the measurements are readily available at formfactors.org in the form of the official specifications. I've gone and used these specifications to draw up some template files you can download in the links below that have the mounting points as well as the PCIe slot locations for ATX, MATX and ITX boards. If you need more detailed figures for, say, legacy connectors, these can be found in the official spec sheet PDFs. Using Fusion 360, a two-scale 2D drawing can be generated that can be printed to use as a template for cutting or drilling. The best thing about working to the spec sheet is that you have lots of control. I thoroughly recommend becoming comfortable with them, especially since they also contain information about other components, such as power supplies or add-on cards. Okay, so I've gone and printed off one of the templates that we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using an ATX one today. You'll notice I've added a couple extra details. So I've got a big motherboard cutout. Now, I haven't included this one in the files because it does change from board to board. Some of them have the sockets in different places and I'm going to be using an X399 board for this example. That's going to be different to say Z370 or similar. So this is what we're going to be working with. It's made from four sheets of A4 paper that have been stuck together with some sellotape. Just make sure that all the edges are actually to scale. So take a, a ruler or some calipers to it and check it. Now I know that my one is because I've just done that, but it's really important because otherwise the printer may have scaling issues and it may not come out in the right size. So let's work out how to use this. By far the easiest way of attaching one of these templates to your material is using a spray adhesive, such as 3M Photo Mount. Now if you're going to be using a metal, then you can actually apply it directly to the surface itself because you can use something like acetone to dissolve it afterwards. If you're using, however, acrylic or a wood or MDF like I am here, then you're going to want to mask it off first because then you can just pull the masking tape off instead. So for this example, I've just roughly cut out a piece of MDF. If you're going to be using your own design, obviously you want to take more care of this, but really the design itself doesn't matter. The important thing are the mounting holes, and that's what we're going to see to now. You have to make sure that you're going to center punch them. Otherwise your drill can very easily wander, especially since it's quite a small diameter one we're going to be using. I'm going to be using M2.5 because I'm going to be threading for M3 standoffs later. I'm using a pillar drill to make this more accurate, but you can very much do this by hand if you're using a softer material such as acrylic or MDF or other woods. If you're using metals, I do suggest using a bench press of sorts. So this is the point we've got to with the tray itself so far. I've just removed the template from the front, so now we've got a clean surface. The next step is to install standoffs. Now, the standoffs are really important because they hold the motherboard off the surface. That's important not only if you're using a material like aluminium, which is obviously conductive, but there are lots of things on the back of motherboards nowadays. There'll be mounting screws, back plates, or even M2 slots if you're using an ITX board, for instance. So the standoffs play quite a crucial role, and they come in several different flavors. One of the ones that I like to use a lot are these little M3 ones. Now, they're five millimeters tall, and they've got an M3 thread on both the inside and the outside. Now, these are great for using with metal. They can also work with acrylic, but the threads can strip. So quite often you're going to end up using, say, an industry standard one, which is a 632. So it's not metric, that's imperial. Or you can use an M4, which is a bigger yet. 
The 632 ones are very common in cases that you're gonna buy off the shelf. So you may have a few of those lying around from a previous build, for instance. Now I am aware that tapping into MDF isn't exactly the most robust thing to do, especially for a small diameter hole like M3. But for the sake of this example, it's gonna do fine. So as you can see, all the holes have indeed lined up and now our motherboard is mounted to our makeshift tray. And this just goes to show how it's actually quite a simple thing just to be able to make one from scratch. So you don't actually need to go and find a donor system to chop one up and use that. You can make one from scratch instead for your build and it will be a better fit. 